I am terrible when it comes to time frames and, and years passed and years elapsed and all that sort of thing. Sometimes I think something went by two years ago and it's been 20 years and vice versa. And I don't know if any of you can relate to that. So as I'm speaking today, any time frames that I give you are purely approximate. <laughs> I have no idea what they really are. It's just been kind of a schmear for the last 15 years. But I think it was about six or seven years ago that Frank was working um, part-time at uh, a treatment center right around the corner from us, local treatment center. And uh, they needed another sub, and so he called me and said, would I come in? And I said, sure. So I went in and did a series of group sessions. And uh, one of them was a women's group, and it was spiritual recovery. And so we were talking about spiritual issues, much the way we talk about here, and uh, with a recovery you know, bent to it all. And as I was looking at the group of women, I think there's 25 or so of them, you could see the level of interest in every face. You could see the ones that were completely checked out and words were just bouncing off their force field. You could see ones that were looking at you and actually had you know, um, the uh, eye contact and some comprehension. Others that seemed to be enthusiastic and their heads are bobbing up and down. There was a few that came up to me afterwards and wanted to talk about if there was any further reading they could do or what else they could do. And I remember thinking, this was like the perfect um, object lesson for the sower and the seeds, the parable, Jesus' parable of the sower and the seeds, and uh, which really should be called the parable of the four soils, because it really isn't so much about the sower or the seed, the teacher or the word or the message, but it's about our response to that message. And if you remember, he throws the seeds indiscriminately and some fall on the footpath that's compacted and it just kind of bounces off and the birds come and take the seed away. It falls among the rocks and it sprouts up quickly, but there's no depth of soil there. So the sun comes and withers it out. Some grow among the, falls among the thorns and the thorns grow up with the plants, but they steal all the nutrients and choke out the, the plants. And then the fourth is the good soil. And over the last 15 years of working with the effect, it's been the same thing. We see the people come through, and we can see the four soils in operation. You know, there's just some that walk in the door, and they run out screaming again. <laughs> you know, it's just not their cup of tea. It's OK. You know, there's others that last for a while, and so on and so forth. Frank has been the good soil. We have had the opportunity to see Frank from the very, very beginning to the very end, at least as far as he's come right now. And it's been an amazing journey to watch, to respond to the message, to respond to a new and alien and different message, and yet carry it and continue to carry it, even when it gets difficult. I don't know how much you know about uh, Frank's story. And uh, I don't think I'm busting his anonymity because I'm sure he would tell you himself but Frank came here from Texas uh, to enter a alcohol rehab program. That was his reason for coming. And he rode his motorcycle out from Dallas all this way, <laughs> drinking all along the way because he hadn't started yet, of course. I mean, it made perfect sense at the time, right? And so he gets there, and he gets it, and he, uh, he elects the, uh, the Christian you know, track within this, uh, within this program. And what they did was they would send their people to us, the effect, on Tuesday nights for the uh, recovery program we had on Tuesday nights. And so he first got a blast of the effect on a Tuesday night. And I'm pretty sure he told me that he thought we were all nuts at the time. <laughs> now, either he was required to keep coming because of the program or he opted to keep coming. But anyway, he kept coming, which was a great thing. And as time went on, he became more and more a part of the effect. And at the same time, he's living kind of this nomadic life. I think, Frank, you've had at least five different residences in the last so many years, 13 years or so that I know of. There could be more. But as he was uh, released from the program, he uh, and a couple of, of friends uh, rented a house together. And so the three of them rented a house. And it became kind of, became kind of a de facto um, sober home, if you will. But the three of them, and uh, as, as roommates started to leave, then new ones would come in, and then they'd take in strays. And so then it really became kind of a group home, and Frank became the den mother, of course, you know, of all these guys. And they would have uh, barbecues and parties over there, especially on Fourth of July, and a lot of us effectors would come, and it was a great time. Well, when that ran its course, 
Frank moved in with Marion and me and our kids. And I think he was with us for a year and a half to two years, or maybe 20, you know, because, <laughs> or maybe it just felt like 20. No, Frank was the perfect roommate. He was a great roommate. I remember we had a downstairs bedroom that, that he occupied in his first day in, and he set everything up, and I was standing at the doorway talking to him, and he was sitting at the desk with his computer set up. And there was one of those uh, plastic half-liter bottles of probably Diet Coke, because that's what he always drinks, with maybe two to three fingers in the bottom, and we're just talking. And he picks it up, <laughs> and instead of taking a drink from it, he spits into it. And all of a sudden, I realize he's Chewbacca, you know? It's like, oh my gosh, it's so disgusting. But he, he handled it well. You, know. you get to learn a lot about people when they're living in your home, of course. And one of the things I learned about Frank was his preference in movies and his abruptness as well. We'd all sit down to watch a movie, and if it didn't have the requisite number of automatic weapons firing, or if it had the least hint of drama in it, after 10 minutes, he would just stand up and walk to his room, and he were gone. That was it. And it was just like, yeah, that's, that was Frank, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was probably two full years after he moved out that he told me about this practice that he had every day. When he was getting ready to, to move in with us, Marion and I wanted to have a sober house for him. So we took whatever alcohol we had in our pantry and poured it out and, and threw it away. And we didn't drink the whole time that he was with us in the home. What I didn't know is that there was one lonely bottle of tequila, probably with this much left in it, up in the top shelf of the pantry. And he told me that every day he would look at that bottle of Kahlua. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me? I would have poured it out, of course. He says, no, 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 you don't get the, po you don't get the point. The point is, every morning I would open that door and I would look at that bottle and I would say, not today. Not today. I love that story. And that not today has lasted what now? 13 years? How many years you got, buddy? 13, 13 years. Yeah. Now, over on the effects side, he started in just, you know, basically tolerating us and then showing up a little bit more. And then when he was released, for the, released from the program and had his Sundays free, I think he told me you went and checked out a few other churches first you know, just to see if there's anyone less crazy than we. But then he ended up coming back to us. And then he started taking on more uh, volunteer duties, just helping out. I don't think there was a pancake breakfast that you weren't making pancakes or eggs or something. He started to coming uh, to more of the events that we had, men's breakfasts and soaks and things. As he got further along in his own recovery, he took over leadership role in the Tuesday nights. And Maybe a lot of you don't know, but Frank started out his life wanting to be a pastor. And he has about a year and a half or two years at Dallas Theological Seminary. And it took him that long to get disillusioned enough in the whole business that he left and pursued other things in his life. But here, as he was getting more and more involved in the leadership, he felt himself coming full circle. And so he talked to me about it, and he wanted to, he completed our ministerial program, our training program. He became a licensed Christian counselor, and we ordained him here probably about 10 years ago, or 20, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he's been a recovery pastor here ever since, and has just grown with the position. He is someone that I know that I can always go to <laughs> even though he tells me he wants six weeks' notice before he does a message here on a Sunday morning. But other than that, you know, <laughs> he's been something we could go to. When we started our treatment centers, we started an outpatient treatment center, and Frank was a counselor with us. When we started our inpatient and detox center, Frank was a counselor with us, and he became a KDAC-2, which is a high-level certified alcohol and drug addiction counselor, and he's been doing that as well. So he's been an integral part of just about everything that we've done here. And so it's going to be difficult to say goodbye to you, buddy. Um, I think Frank is the perfect example of where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Now, everything that Frank does here, we can and we will replace. We have to. But we can't replace you, you see. There is, in Frank, a presence. There is a, a character. <laughs> there is the humor and the sarcasm. But there is something about Frank that 
just has become a cornerstone in our community. He's become a part of our family to such an extent that that can't be replaced, Frank. And more than that, or in addition to that, Frank is probably the poster child for everything that the effect is about. As I said, we got to see him when he came in raw, when he came in on the first day of, of his recovery. And we watched him push through that. We watched him work on the basics of recovery to bring himself up finally to ground level, you know, just to be balanced. But he didn't stop there. And he kept on working after that. And he pushed through. Frank came in here as a conservative Southern Baptist. Do you imagine the car crash it was when he started hearing the way that we interpret the gospel here, the way that we look at Jesus? You know? And he did. He struggled with that for quite some time. And I watched him take two steps forward and a step back. But he persevered and he pushed through. And he just didn't take our word for it. He didn't take my word for it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He started studying on his own. He went to the living school with Richard Rohr. He read on his own. He pushed through to become a fully contemplative man with a conviction that is all his own. You know, he is convinced of what he's convinced of. And he'll tell you if you ask him. And it's changed the way that Frank has lived his life, because I've watched him, man. And it's changed the way that he works with each one of us, the way he counsels, the way he leads. And you feel that in him. And so we've got the privilege of having watched you through this entire trip. And that's what the effect is all about. To simply encourage people to take their own journey. Frank took his journey. And now it's time for him to move on to the next phase. But Frank, it's been my privilege to watch you take this journey. It's my privilege to have worked with you as we have, joined at the hip practically for 13 years. And it's my privilege to call you my friend. And I know that will continue even if we don't get to see each other as much. But thank you for your years here. Thank you for everything that you've given and how you've transformed our family as well. All right. We have several other speakers that wanted to say some things up here today. And the first one is someone who was Frank's roommate at the treatment center. So he is someone who has also gone through the same sort of journey, also ordained here as a recovery pastor. And his name is Jim Allen. Brandon, would you bring up my phone, though? Trouble is, Jim is very sick today. <laughs> and he couldn't be here. So <laughs> he's already called me four times. I was hoping that he would be streaming, but he wasn't sure he could make that happen. So we're going to try to do something here. I have no idea if this is going to work. Um, let's see. Call Jim Allen. Let's see if we can get him on the phone and see if this will work. Bang. One ringy dingy. How do we do that? I, I can tell you I've never done this before. Hi, Jim. Well, hi, Jim. How you doing? I am alive okay now jim you are on speakerphone for the entire room and going out through the stream so be careful <laughs> oh boy oh boy okay <laughs> so we're all ready for you i've already said i've introduced you what would you like to say about your journey with frank or anything else well amigo we were the three amigos and now we're down to two I'm uh, going to miss you, buddy. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, for all of you, you don't know that uh, me and Frank, uh, 13 and a half years ago, or uh, somewhere in that area, uh, met at Pacific Hills. And uh, we had, I'm, I'm there, and he comes in, and we start talking. And uh, this guy's got this Texas drawl, and I said, well, I like him anyway. <laughs> and uh, we went through, and uh, many, I know there was a lot of different things that went on, but uh, as most of you know, uh, uh, <laughs> he's a very giving, Frank's very giving. He gives himself in many, many ways. 
uh, Frank was fairly new at Pack Hills, and uh, we were uh, we had a guy that just came in from uh, 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 he was detoxed, and he had come in, and uh, he was trying to find somebody to give him money or loan him money to uh, uh, buy some cigarettes. Well, everybody in there was, you got to be very tight with your money when you're there. And we had uh, a few, uh, with him being there so little, he hadn't caught on to that yet. And uh, so Frank, he gives him a, a, a 20 to get cigarettes because that's all he has. Well, the next no thing we know, we have, uh, there's a, all points bulletin out for uh, this guy that uh, Frank uh, loaned $20 to. Well, all the house uh, managers were called in and they were all over, up and down the street. Well, they found him at a place just right around the corner from uh, Pack Hills, the Red Fox Inn. <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> This guy had uh, uh, gone through the $20 that uh, Frank had loaned him and had a uh, bill of uh, somewhere around uh, uh, $16 and something. So he had really gone through the, uh, the booze there. And needless to say, this guy was uh, on his way back to uh, uh, detox. And... Uh, so that was uh, a fairly uh, funny thing for us uh, at uh, Pack Hill since none of us could drink or uh, or anything. But uh, Frank is very giving. Uh, Frank kind of heard, uh, learned about uh, the giving there to be careful. But uh, Frank, I love you, man. I'm going to miss you. And uh, uh, sorry, I'm not able to be there i didn't want to infect you and uh, everybody else there so i'm going to leave now on that note and uh be on my way and again frank love you man love you, Jim. and uh you know you did uh, a lot a lot to help me with uh uh becoming a counselor and a uh uh uh, uh, a pastor, Lord uh, Frank. So I appreciate you very much. So I will uh, be in touch, and uh, I hope to see everybody else uh, soon uh, uh, after I get rid of this uh, uh, whatever it is I got. It's a uh, upper respiratory. Sorry, everybody. You get better quick, Jimmy. Okay. I will. All it's right, the breathing that kills me. All right. Well, keep doing it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think right. I need that. All right. I Thanks, think I Jim. need that. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, Jim. <laughs> Nina, would you come up here, dear? <laughs> Jim is calling me back already. <laughs> I'm busy. Thank you, Dave. So, so much of everything Dave said, it's exactly what, what I wrote down for me to say too because the journey is so much of the same. And I, I wrote things down because many times I just talk off the top of my head, but I don't want to forget anything, so I wrote things down. I hope you don't mind, but anyway, it's a, a neat little story. I really never thought this day would come that Franklin would be leaving us and returning to his home in Texas. Frank, you have been such a large part of our community. There will be an awful, awfully large placeholder that no one else can ever possibly fill. Your sarcasm, your dry wit, <laughs> your Baptist roots, I'll keep going. No. Your wonderful reading voice, your lovely prayers that always end with, we thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name. Someone's going to have to pick that up. It's precious. I met Frank many years ago 
actually when he first came out to California from Texas to get help and find his recovery. He rode all the way from Texas on his motorcycle. I remember the buzz that was going through the treatment center at that time, where the whole staff was amazed that someone would actually be making the trick trek, drinking from Texas on a motorcycle to get help. We had never seen such desperation and such commitment, but he made it. And we were all duly impressed, to say the least, that he was that desperate to make a new start. And a new start Frank made. I'm sorry, one moment. It was obvious that the magic of the Holy Spirit was at work from the very beginning, weaving a new ending to an old story. Frank had two roommates who all became very close and shared a total recovery experience that, had lasted, that has lasted vibrant through the years. Frank embraced the 12-step program offered at the center, with one of the activities being the Tuesday night prayer group at The Effect. I think that Frank fell in love and had an experience with the God of his recovery when he entered these doors. He listened to the music, met Dave and Marion, and found a community of people who understand we're all recovering from something. In another one of those magical moments, Frank threw his hat in the ring and joined our community. He has served us so faithfully in his role as our recovery pastor. We're so grateful. A few years back, Frank and I had the privilege of attending the Living School, Father Richard Rohr's two-year program in New Mexico that opened up the world of non-dual thinking, alternative orthodoxy, and the writings of the mystics in their experience of God. Richard Rohr's teachings dovetailed exactly with Dave's messages regarding contemplative practice lived out in a caring Christian community setting. We brought our experiences home with us and actually had our own seminar on the Way of the Mystics, where Frank actually brought Francis of Assisi to life for us as he imitated the saint and told his story. It was a beautiful and humble sharing of life that we will never forget. It was on one of those trips to New Mexico for a seminar that Frank and some of his buddies rented motorcycles so they could ride the open countryside in New Mexico during one of the breaks. I was lucky enough to be able to join the guys on one of those trips. I rode on the second seat behind Frank, holding on to him for dear life. What a ball it was. I had the time of my life, the wind in my face, the sun shining so bright, the absolute beauty of the New Mexico countryside, and especially the road we were taking called the Turquoise Trail, filled my heart and my soul with the beauty of creation in another one of those magical moments. That was so cool. I haven't gone motorcycle riding since then, but I became a true lover of the sport. Frank also worked with us as a drug and al alcohol counselor for many years at Encompass Recovery. We had many more great times, lots of laughter, and made lifelong friends through our work upstairs, offering the gift and beauty of restored relationships as the cornerstone of recovery to many people searching for the truth. What will I miss about you most, Frank? your honest, sincere, sometimes sarcastic, but mostly truthful manner of speaking, sometimes on the edgy side that keeps us all on our toes, your commitment, warmth, and pursuit of a real relationship with God has been obvious to us all. Frank, you will be missed so much, but please know that we are fully here to support you, love you, and send you on your way with many blessings and a full heart. Vaya con Dios. Doug, come on, buddy. Thank you. Well, Frank, I got to know you a little later, so you were good soil by then. <laughs> really good soil and bearing a lot of fruit, uh, which is kind of funny because you're more of a meat eater, but, uh, you know. But I got to know you, um, I mean, just through the church in general, but it was... Um, I think we got to know each other even more through the sponsorship 
and you helped me with Al-Anon and were a great sponsor. Um, I don't know if it was, we met at Bad to the Bone, so I don't know if it was the sponsoring or just the great meals. Uh, I think I got the best of the deal on some of those meals, but uh, that was where it started. It's a very fond memory of, of that. Uh, I too have stories of the, of the living school. And um, again, what was the decision? Was it the living school I liked so much or was it the motorcycle? And uh, as Nina describes, uh, we had a great um, outing with the motorcycles. And uh, I got so impressed with it that with uh, Frank and Scott, I ended up getting a motorcycle which my wife is not too happy with, or nor my daughter, but uh, it's kind of parked in the garage, calling my name every day. And uh, that was a great experience. There's nothing like it. Um, so uh, I was going to remember your sincerity and genuineness. It's just, uh, just so nice. It's just so nice to talk to somebody where you just, you just be yourself. You just don't have to be anything else. And I'm always going to remember that. Um, the sermon, what is, what is the best sermon that Frank ever gave? And there's so many, uh, it's just hard to decide. Um, my daughter's favorite and, and one of mine is the, uh, heartbeat, how life is up and down like a heartbeat and, uh, the Paschal mystery, if some of you are into some of the other, uh, de uh, descriptions, but that was special. Another great sermon was the, uh, about those tough times where you, you know, your, your nose is almost against the chalkboard and you can't see it and you have to step back and, and see the whole picture. And that, that was great, but I don't think anything's going to beat uh, God in the box. Um, to me, that was the best. Uh, I don't know if that's my favorite. And you also, you're holding that beautiful ball and, uh, I liked it because as an engineer, you know, you wanted to find everything. Everything has to be in its little place. So to say that God is not in a box and you can't define him, I go, what? You know, so uh, that was great. So I'll always remember that one. Um, again, I have this beautiful voice, that voice, that reading, that was just wonderful. It's just, wow. Even with the Texas draw, it, it, it's just, just beautiful. Um, Probably one of our darkest times was that uh, tough drive to Albuquerque <laughs> with the motorcycles in tow. Uh, the car we were driving didn't have very good headlights and driving at night in the foggy weather. I, had, I ended up getting just recently cataract surgery because my eyes have been going. going. And so poor Frank had to do most of the driving. And, but we made it and it was good. It was fun to ride our, my new motorcycle in Albuquerque once again. So uh, that's a great thing. Um, of course, Nina touched on it, and that was Francis of Assisi, but uh, Frank knows I called him Frank de Sissi, uh, <laughs> but he got back at me. I played a character called Meister Eckhart, but he called me Meister Egghead, <laughs> which was good. And then, of course, we had uh, Julian of Norwick, which was actually Nina of Nordstrom, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so those were great. Um, I don't know. There's so much to add. Uh, I, we're going to miss that Baptist touch. I mean, it's not that I, I don't love Dave. I take multicolored notes, and I get my air uh, decoder ring out and all that. But uh, I also love your, your messages, sincerity, with that little Baptist touch in there. But not too much. Just, just the little salt and pepper of it. Uh, Pretty much all I have. I mean, now uh, I guess the only good news is Frank too is now going to be just Frank. So we, you know, <laughs> you know, her, her take that. But we're going to really miss you. you. Just so much more to say, but you've just been a just a wonderful person to know. So thank you. Isn't it interesting how all the character traits are starting to become themes as we go through here? And to further that, I would like to call up Frank's absolute nemesis. We'll wait for months so you can see that my picture up here. This is who I relate to right 
there. He's the man that showed. Oh, yeah, I got to talk in this. Uh, that's going to be difficult for me to do that because I don't really talk very well anyways. So let me just say, starting off, uh, Frank and I have known each other a lot longer than we thought because we're both from Dallas, Texas, and uh, we know some of the same high schools and everything, except he went and I didn't. <laughs> so I decided that, uh, you know, after a period of time, it was probably a good thing to just follow Frank, even though I didn't really know who he was. So Frank drove out to California, and he went to a place called Pack Hills, and he lived in a place called The Basement. And I thought, wow, that's a really good idea. So I decided to do exactly the same thing. Uh, I had some encouragement along the way. And uh, so when I got into the recovery place as well, uh, life was better for me. God came to me there, and he, he showed me that love is the way. And he filled me with a heart full of love. And he said, that's never going to go away. It's never going to run out. And you need to give it to everybody you can. And uh, I came to the effect and then one of the moments that I saw that was the greatest thing in the world was I saw Frank, Marion, and uh, Scott, and they were always getting on their knees with pillows, and they usually would have five or six people uh, huddled up with them on their knees, and they brought God to their lives because they were in recovery and they needed help. And I never, th I just thought about that, and I said, all the lives that these three have touched over time, they don't even know who they touch. Because, you know, once you affect one person, it affects another person, and the changes keeps going on. And I thought that was probably one of the most beautiful things in my entire life, to think that all the world could be turned into love if they just got the feeling of it. And they would if they had known these three. And Frank, he got up one time and did the message, and... This is where this came from. And at, first of all, I got kind of like lost in watching it. <laughs> so his message was really all about one thing that really, and see, I didn't know God all my life. I have never known anything about him. And until that day God came into my life, uh, I just didn't know. And so I'm, you know, trying to understand and everything as God sent me here, the effect. He said, you need to have some help and channel you with what you have been given. And uh, Frank, of course, helped me in many ways. And that's why I love him because, first of all, he's the only Texan I know that's here. And uh, so that was helpful because, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to understand what we say. <laughs> if it gets past four letters, I look at you like, what? That's you, uh, Angelo. <laughs> no, he said I was something the other day. It sounded good. I said, I'll be that. <laughs> I don't think it was actually a good thing, though. <laughs> so anyways, I'll, uh, not to take up much more time, but uh, I love Frank. I remember the moment that he first had a tear. And he said, you know, because in Texas, we just don't cry. And he told me that a bunch of times. And I said, it'll come, because it's already had to me. I would let myself be vulnerable. I don't care. You, ha I'm all that you see. And Frank, I saw his moment, and that was just awesome, too, because now it's, it, he's past that point. <laughs> he won't be able to tell anybody in Texas about that. But, it, <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you that Frank is just a loving individual. He is a sharp individual. He knows God. And he told me about what this meant, and it strictly meant that a lot of us think we know who God is, and we're happy to be complacent with that, and that we kind of take God and put him in a box and say we understand God, so we're good with that. But nobody can understand God. There's no way that you can do that. And if you try to close yourself up to that, then you miss all the wonderful things that come after because he's always, every day there's a new thing. It's always something new. And Frank taught me that. It was one of the first messages he ever gave. So I remembered it all the time. And I asked Frank to even give it another time. And then I asked him, well, you know, uh, I think a couple of days ago, I said, well, you know, I'd really like a copy of your message. And he was happy to give it to me, but he didn't have it. He said, well, then I called him a day after. I said, well, could you give me a little bit of what it was about? 
because how am I going to tell you today if I didn't know what it was about? <laughs> and he did. <laughs> so then from there, I put together a little bit of this to symbolize it because I have God all around me. I don't know God, but every day I have the blessing of knowing more and more about love and life. And that's because I don't close my eyes to it anymore. Close my eyes to it anymore. <laughs> so thank you. But I would really to say thank you, Frank. You have made my life so much different. I'll never forget all the wonderful things you said, but I'll never forget those people sitting on that floor right here praying with you. And you just do it over and over and over. And all their lives are so much better for it. Thank you, Frank. It was a little unnerving. I forgot, I forgot. One thing. All of these will be sitting, oh, all of these balls will be sitting over on a table over there. And anybody that would like to get one, just go ahead. Uh, Frank signed them in a way. <laughs> and the disco ball is going to be sitting over there as well. And I'd like for everybody to sign that because we're going to keep this in memory of Frank. So thank you. It was a little unnerving watching him because I didn't know where to look. Should I watch these things swaying back? <laughs> or watch his eyes? <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> That's great. And I would like to call up my favorite person in the room right now. Baby. I love you, too. Um, the hardest thing about being the last person to speak is that everybody said what I wanted to say. Um, but I'll just reiterate some of those things. Uh, I don't remember the effect without you. And it will never be without you. Because you are so much a part of it that your presence will always be here. You've been a constant in my life. You've been a friend. Someone I could always go to, and I knew that. Um, I imprint with people. So if I see you 10 years from now, it's going to be just like today. And I'll never forget you, and I will hold you in my heart forever. I have seen God's hand on you from the first moment I met you. I remember when you had hair. <laughs> A little more heavy set. I remember the tattoos when they first came and the ear piercings that you were afraid to show your mama. <laughs> you were an amazing roommate. We loved you dearly. And if Megan hadn't come home from college, you'd probably still be with us. <laughs> um, I have a lot more I want to say to you, but um, I'll say that in private. Okay. I love you. I'm going to have Marion stay here. Oh. I have one more thing I wanted to read to you real quick. I'm sorry. No, this Irish blessing, it just came up in my head today. You can come up here. It's just a second. Okay, go for it. Okay. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields and your pine trees. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. That was worth it. Okay. Nina, would you come up here? Doug, would you come up here? And Frank, would you come up here? So let's see. How do we arrange the real estate here? Um, have you stand there and you go there? And Where's Doug? There he is. Okay. I'm going to give the mic to Nina to start off with. Thank you, Dave. Um, Frank, we have a few little gifts for you. First of all, here's a little card that mostly everyone, I, and if everyone hasn't had a chance to sign it, we tried our best, but please sign it after the service is over. Could you just open it real quick? You could, re you could read it out loud. <laughs> Goodbye from Olive us and it's olives on the front 
what can we say watching you go is really the pits. Best of luck. <laughs> Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> it really will be hard without you here, Frank. Thank you, Nina. And we have one gift from all of us as well. If you could just take a moment and open it. Oh, paper. Thank you. <laughs> and more paper. Thank you. And more paper. Thank you. Is there anything in here besides paper? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think you may be right. Not one that I'm going to be able to ride very easily, but... Uh... Oh, no. It's Francis of Assisi. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Thank you very much. And, and Frank, if I could just say a couple things. Yes. I hope this statue reminds you of us here in this community because it really was even started by a Franciscan priest, Father Junipero Serra. And the Franciscan theme is all throughout San Juan Capistrano and, and Francis of Assisi's teachings. He was Franciscan. And our whole contemplative life has been an expansion of all that. So we hope, and also you being Francis of Assisi to <laughs> us. So, And we just really so see all the growth and the contemplative model that you've been to all of us as you've incorporated all these ideals. So I know it might be a little bit of a rub being Baptist, and this is rather Catholic, but in any case, it's we hope you beautiful. enjoy it. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much. Frank. It's a we perfect love you. remembrance. Oh, cool. Thank you. Marion? Oh, no. Doug, Doug sorry. Yes, no, that's okay. We got one other. And we take a lot of pictures here at the effect. And so we got you a digital smart frame. Oh. That's the box. But. <laughs> This is what it looks like, okay. and I'll plug it in over here. But it has 485, I counted, photos of the effect over the many years. I deleted 23 of them, which is when you are uh, presenting in the morning and John asks you about the soak. I thought that would be kind of a living hell, so I, I took that out. <laughs> but all the rest are there. <laughs> so. Hopefully, and it automatically go off every time you walk by, oh, and it's, uh, I'll go over the technical details later, but pretty much plug it in and watch. Awesome. So, Thanks, Doug. Sure. Very cool. Yeah. Let's see, where are we at? No, we're already at 1130. So, um, um, Frank, wouldn't you like to hear a bit from Frank? Yeah, I think it's time to hear a bit from you, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, hi, guys. You know, this is an incredibly happy time for me and an incredibly sad time for me. Um, I'm very excited about the future, and I am absolutely heartbroken to leave this family. Everybody in here has been a part of my life, touched my life, had a place in my life, contributed to my life. Um, it's been an amazing journey. You know, and truly, when I came out here 13 years ago, it was at the lowest point in my life. Um, I was broken. I was beaten. I just, you know, I was at a point in life where I, I didn't care if I woke up the next morning. Um, and, you know, through recovery and through the effect, uh, I found a new life. And Dave did get something a little bit wrong. You know, he mentioned that, you know, I came on Tuesday nights and thought the effect was weird. That's not correct. I always was in love with Tuesday nights. It's when I came on Sunday morning and heard him <laughs> preaching that I thought the effect was a little weird, and I had to go visit some other churches first. 
and went and found a Baptist church in San Clemente and attended there for about three or four weeks and realized I was still sitting on the back row, hadn't met a, soul, a single person, and, uh, you know, and I thought, well, at least if I go to the effect, I'll be forced to meet people and get more involved, and, you know, and so, yeah, I did, and I came, and I started listening to Dave's message, and I started questioning, and I, you know, started challenging, and I started considering and reconsidering, and, you know, this place the effect, has given me the chance to be ministered to and to minister. It's given me the opportunity to find recovery and to share recovery. It's given me the opportunity to become more spiritual and to share my spirituality. It has been an amazing, amazing place in my life. And each person in here is the effect. This body is the effect. And each of you have been a part of that. You know, I, uh, I look at faces in, in this room and what I see are memories, you know, going through good times together and going through bad times together, you know, of, of sharing struggles and of sharing joy, um, of sharing the ups of life and the downs of life. You know, because over the course of 13 years, you know, we have all been on the high side and we've all been on the low side. We've all had the times of challenge and we've all had the times of great celebration. And that's what relationships are. And that's what true relationship is about. And I can't thank you enough for those memories. I can't thank you enough for the opportunity to be a part of this. And truly, as Dave said, um, this has allowed my life to come full circle. And it's just, uh, it's just been awesome. You know, I came out here just to try and get s sober. And uh, I actually only planned to stay out here for 60 days. I was gonna go through treatment and then turn around and go back to Texas. And thankfully, at some point during those 60 days, I realized that I probably wasn't going to be ready to run back to Texas at the end of 60 days and still maintain my sobriety. And so that's when the three of us rented the house and we all committed to stay here for one year. And then we would all go our separate ways and go back to wherever we were from. And here we are 13 years later, and it's been the most amazing 13 years of my life. Um, I could never have guessed that God had this in store for me. I could never have guessed uh, the blessings uh, that would come with being a part of this uh, for 13 years. I could never, in my wildest dreams, have imagined... Um, what he had planned. So thank you, each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this, for being a part of my life, for being someone special to me, and for making this last 13 years so incredibly special to me. Thank you. Pastor Scott. After listening to all the stories, I can only think of one thing that's really profound, and that's, can I borrow 20 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and I have been on this journey for these 13 years, and I can't think of a better person to go through all the things that my life has been presented with and have a co-traveler along the road, somebody I can turn to, I can cry with, I can laugh with. 
I can share my life with, go for motorcycle rides with, yes. have lunches with, enjoy our sarcasm together. If I had five hours, I couldn't say enough about this man and how he's affected my life. He's shown me integrity, the truth spoken in love, served up well, because you can always get that out of Frank. Right now, what I want to do is invite anybody who cares to join me to come up and lay hands on Frank as we pray him home to Texas and wish him the best in all of his life and everything that he does. So feel free to come up and join us. I'll begin the prayer when we're all up here, and when I'm done, Marion will close us out. After I'm done praying, anybody who wants to share a word pray as well. Just let me know and I'll hand them the mic. Father God, we come before you to just ask you to bless abundantly our brother Frank, to thank you for his life, thank you for his integrity as a man and as a person, humbly admit his downfalls and admit where his strength comes from, which is you and your heart that you've given him, Lord. Thank you for turning his life around and loaning him to us. We love this man desperately, Lord. We are asking you to just bless him in all that he does, all he lays his heart and hand to, guided by your Holy Spirit in him. We thank you for the time and the season that he's spent with us, and we know very quickly we'll all be back together again. It's what gives us hope and makes this a happy day and not a sad day. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody care to share a word? Who about streaming media at home? Oh. You know, this is a wonderful day. I am thrilled with all of Frank's family and friends that he's going home to. As hard as it is for us, I can't help but be excited for them to have Frank home. So I'm waving goodbye with a sad heart and a happy heart for all your friends and family and the lives that you're still going to touch. How wonderful that we were able to spend this time with you. I'll never forget our lunch. Daryl, how can I do this? And you just took it and ran. And I have tears of joy right now. So Frank, it's been a pleasure. And it's been my honor to be your friend. So thank you. Where, where's Marion? Oh, there we are. Lord Jesus, from the moment Frank was born, you have been downloading goodness into this man. And when he got here, oh, Lord, I saw the transformation start, and I saw all of the things that you have downloaded into him. I pray, Lord, for the journey ahead for Frank, that it's filled, Lord, with family, friends, love. I pray, Lord, that you would always have your hand upon him, that you would guide him, that you would lead him. Lord, that you would help him to continue to be Pastor Frank, the pastor that touches people, that helps with the mir miracles of recovery, <coughs> that helps other people transform into who you want them to be, Lord Jesus. I thank you so much for allowing us to have Frank in our lives for this brief amount of time. And I thank you, Lord, that he has been that he has taught us all so much. Thank you so much for him, my friend. Bless him and carry him on his way, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.